This DAG has to change. We can change the way we share data between the tasks, the way we define the DAG object, and the way we define the Python operator for the tasks. How? By using dynamic task mapping, the task free API, and the last features of Airflow 2.4. Hi, my name is Mark Lamati, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy, and you are going to improve the first DAG that you have built in that video as a beginner with the last features of Airflow. So get ready because you are going to discover the task free API, dynamic task mapping, and how to better instantiate your DAG object. So fasten your seatbelt, take a deep breath, and let's go. Before getting started, let me tell you that if you want to follow that video, you can do it by clicking on the link in the description below where you will discover how to run Airflow locally in 5 minutes with Docker. The other option is to use the Astro CLI, which is truly the easiest way to go with Airflow locally. Also, we are going to use Airflow 2.4, so make sure that you have this version on your machine. Okay, let me give you a quick recap of what you've done in the video creating your first data pipeline in Airflow. By the way, if you don't have this data pipeline, take a look at the video at the top right corner. So just below, you've created a DAG with a schedule interval at daily to run it every day at midnight, and you have created a couple of tasks using the Python operator and the bash operator. If you look at the Python operator, you have three tasks, training model A, B, and C. And if you look at training model A, that task executes the following Python function. That Python function returns a random integer between 1 and 10 that corresponds to an accuracy, a fake accuracy. We do that for training model B and training model C as well. So once you have those three tasks and you return the accuracies, those accuracies are stored in XCOMs somewhere in the database so that you can share those accuracies with other tasks. And that's what you are doing next with choose best model. Choose best model is a branch Python operator so you can choose one task or another according to a value. So in that case, you want to choose either accurate or inaccurate. Why are you going to choose accurate over inaccurate? Well, if you look at the Python function executed by the branch Python operator, so choose best model, you can see that this Python function gets all the accuracies sent by training model A, B, and C, and then looks for the maximum accuracy. If it is above 8, accurate is executed next, otherwise inaccurate. So that's what you've built so far. Now, we can improve that data pipeline with the last features of Airflow 2.4, and as you are going to see, it will be much easier to read and to develop. Begin with, let's begin with the easy part, the DAG definition object. And the first thing that we can do is to remove the schedule interval parameter. Indeed, since Airflow 2.4, there is no more schedule interval parameter, but you have the parameter schedule. Why? Because as you might know, in Airflow, there are many ways of scheduling your data pipeline, either by using a cron expression, that's what we are doing here with at daily, or by using a time delta object, which is way more complex than a cron expression, but you had another parameter for that. Now, timetables and cron expressions, they use the same parameter, schedule. Another parameter that I advise you to use is description. Always define a description to your data pipeline to explain what it is. For example, here, training ML models. This description will appear on the Airflow UI. When you hover the name of your DAG, you will see that description. Another thing that I recommend you to add are the tags. With the tags, you can better organize your data pipelines according to their functionality or according to the teams that are working on the data pipelines and so on. So for example, here you add the parameter tags that takes a list and you can put, let's say, the data engineering team and that DAG belongs to Mark. If you save the file and go on the Airflow UI, I have a bunch of DAGs, and if I hover the DAG name, I get the description, training ML models, just below, you can see the tags. If I click on data engineering, I get the DAGs with the tag data engineering, in that case, only old DAG. So don't hesitate to use the tags and always define a description. That being said, we are done with the DAG definition object. Let's move to the second part, which is the task flow API. The task free API is a new way of defining your data pipelines in Airflow. It makes it easier to develop, read, and maintain 
your DAGs. You can think of the task API has two components, one the XCOM args, so that it's easier for you to share data between your tasks, no need to use XCOM pull or XCOM push anymore, and the other component are the decorators that help you to create tasks in a much faster way, as you are going to see right now. Back to our DAG, we want to replace the Python operator tasks with the task decorator. And the task decorator is in fact the Python operator, but with much less code. So let's do that. The first step is to import the task decorator. And for that, you can type from airflow.decorators, import tasks. So now you have the task decorator. Just under the DAG definition object, you can use that decorator by typing at task. And below you need to define the Python function that the Python operator executes. So in this case, it's nothing more than training model. So let's copy that Python function and put it under the task decorator like that. We can remove the underscore and just keep the return under the name of the function. And that's it. Just by doing that, you have created a Python operator task with the task ID training underscore model and that task returns a random number. It is as simple as that. This is exactly the equivalent of that task plus the function. So as you can see, it's way much faster than before. That said, we can remove the training model A, B and C tasks. So let's do it. And now you may wonder, but we have only one task here. So what are we gonna do to create the three tasks like before? Well, guess what? we are going to use a new feature of Airflow, which is dynamic task mapping. So stick with me, it's gonna be pretty amazing. Then we want to use a decorator for the branch Python operator as well. To do that, we use the same at task decorator, but we add dot branch. And this behind the scene is the branch Python operator. Like for the Python operator, we need to define the Python function below. In this case, it's underscore choose best model. So let's cut this part like that, and paste it just under the task branch decorator. You can remove the underscore, and that's it. Again, this is the equivalent of the branch Python operator with the Python function. But as you can see, we don't have to instantiate the branch Python operator with the task ID and a Python callable function. We can just use at task.branch and the task ID of that task is choose underscore best underscore model. We can remove the branch Python operator below like that. And now we use XCOM underscore pool in the branch Python operator to get the accuracy that comes from training underscore model. As you know, with the task free API, you have this easier way of sharing data between your tasks. Let me show you how. Well, in this case, you can still return something here nothing new, so that's gonna create a XCOM automatically without using XCOM push. But to pull that data, you are not going to use XCOM underscore pool, you can remove all of that and just put a parameter called accuracy. By doing that, the branch Python operator expects data coming from another task as value of the parameter accuracy. But now the question is, how do you pass that data? How do you pass the data from training underscore model to the branch Python operator. This is where you need to change the way you've defined your dependencies so far in Airflow. Indeed, here you can remove that very long line and instead you put choose underscore best model, so your task, the branch Python operator task, two parentheses, and in those parentheses you put the task training model. Training model returns a number that number becomes the value of accuracies in the task choose best model. That's how you share data between your tasks with the task free API. It is as simple as passing parameters between Python functions. No need to use XCOM pool or XCOM push. Okay, at this point, we have already improved our data pipeline a lot. Indeed, we changed the way we define the DAG object with the scheduling parameter, the tags, and the description. You can even remove the as DAG part you don't have to do it in Airflow 2.4. And then we discovered the task flow API to use the decorators. That's what we do with add task and add task branch instead of using the branch Python operator and the Python operator with all the boilerplate code that you need to define every time. And we are able to share data between tasks seamlessly thanks to the XCOM args, which is the second component of the task free API. Just by passing parameters 
to the tasks. The last step is to create the three tasks, training model A, B, and C, like before, with dynamic task mapping. So what is dynamic task mapping? Well, it's this new way of generating tasks dynamically according to inputs that might not be known in advance. So what does it mean? Let's say you request a SQL table and on Monday you get five records and on Tuesday you get six records. With dynamic task mapping on Monday, your DAG has five tasks and on Tuesday, your DAG has six tasks. So that's what you can do with dynamic task mapping. You don't have to know in advance what is your data to create the tasks accordingly. So let's do that with training model. In that example, we have three accuracies. And so we want to create one task for every accuracy. To do that, instead of returning a number here, we return accuracy that we specify as a parameter of the task here. Once we have that, in the dependencies with training model, you pass a list of accuracies to the parameter accuracy. So you put accuracy equals to a list, and let's say five, 10, and six. Three accuracies as we want to generate three tasks. But now, how do we generate those tasks? Well, very easy. Just after the training model, you add dot, expand, and that's it. By doing that, you expand the task training model. So you create as many tasks as you need according to the parameter accuracy. So three tasks. Finally, we need to add the dependencies with accurate and inaccurate as we choose between those two tasks in the branch Python operator. That's what you can see here. So let's add those dependencies. And this time, as the bash operator is a classic operator and we don't use the task decorator, we cannot do that, okay? Keep in mind that the decorators are not available for all operators. So you can use the other notation with a list and accurate inaccurate. And that's it. Congratulations. Now your DAG looks much better than the one before. Indeed, in this data pipeline, you use the last features of Airflow 2.4, such as the new DAG definition object, the task free API to create tasks faster as well as sharing data easily. Then last but not least, dynamic task mapping in order to create your tasks dynamically according to an input that might not be known in advance. We can take a look at the DAG in the Airflow UI. If you click on it and go to the graph view, you can see your beautiful data pipeline with training model and the square brackets. In fact, if you trigger that DAG, you will see that now you have three tasks as expected choose best model that chooses between accurate or inaccurate according to the accuracies. In this case, accurate. Well done. If you want to find the code, you can find it in the link in the description below. I wish you a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that. That will help me a lot. Take care and see you soon.